It's not an issue brought up often at Toronto City Hall, but halting human trafficking was front and center this morning. Making a presentation on the seriousness of the problem were Shay Inva Diata and Christopher Carden as Villa. Guys, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, you're both with the group called Free Them, right? So, uh, what was uh, this morning's presentation like? I, it was very exciting to be in City Hall this morning. We were one of the organizations represented and happy to say there was 18 people going forward to executive committee this morning to raise our concerns about the issue and the crime of human trafficking that's happening right here in our own city. So this morning was very exciting. All right, okay, let's start right at the beginning here. Let's define human trafficking. What is it? Uh, without giving you the long expanded version of what the UN defines as human trafficking, uh, it is simply the movering, the harboring uh, of a person unwillingly that does not want to be there under the pretense it could be that they were told one thing and ends up something different that ends up happening and they're lured in, they're coerced in and there's really no back door. They're not able to leave, they're not able to get help, they don't know who to go to and one of the most significant factors to human trafficking is that they, their, for, their um, identification is withheld from them. So it really traps them into a position of not being able to leave. And um, generally, these people who are trafficked uh, or part of human trafficking, they're, they're from outside the country, is that correct? Um, you know, over this past year, we've actually seen many cases of both, where you have international traffickers, but also domestic cases uh, where they're domestic human traffickers as well. So Canada is not um, exclusive one way or the other. We are known as what's called a source, destination, and transit country, meaning we have uh, victims that are being brought across international borders. We have victims that are being brought throughout uh, Canada, whether it's from Toronto to Vancouver, and uh, then transit, meaning that they're brought into across our borders to be brought down to the United States. So this is a high level operation that takes human traffickers from outside of our country but also within our own borders to be working together. Christopher, maybe you can tell us how big a problem is human trafficking actually in the city of Toronto? Well, technically there's a lot of people who like, it's not really like people don't know about it but there's a lot of stuff happening today so yeah. And um, Shay, maybe you can expand uh, what happens when, when people fall into the human trafficking problem. Um, so they're promised, maybe walk us through the, the process. They're promised one thing and what eventually happens? Yeah, so um, very simply we can look back even just last over this past year what happened with the Hungarian case where people are brought in from Hungary with the idea that they're going to be able to have this perfect job, they're going to make money, they can send it back home, they can be offered a better life here in Canada and then upon arrival at Pearson International Airport uh, they, are, they meet their human traffickers and their passports, their identification is withheld and then they're forced to do things that they didn't sign up for and in Canada the problem... What sort of things? Uh, well, so the two most prevalent forms of human trafficking in Canada are forced labor and sexual exploitation. And so when you look at sexual exploitation specifically to the city of Toronto, you're talking about um, uh, human trafficking, uh, illegal brothels or massage parlors, escort services, where they're fronting as these operations and yet when you walk in, it's completely different uh, through the back door, so to speak. And what age are these victims? Um, in Canada, the average age of entry into forced prostitution is 13 years old. And which was the importance of today, Christopher's 12 years old. And that's really what we wanted to bring to, uh, to City Council, to Executive Committee. And it was Christopher who said, you know, I'm 12 years old. This is happening to, uh, to my age group, and I want to speak before, before Council this morning. And so that's exactly what he did. Christopher, yeah. tell us your story. Well, my mom brought me into this in 2010, and I, start, I became a committee member of Freedom. And ever since, I've been helping it with everything. So, yeah. What was it like this morning? Tell us a little. What well, did you tell them? Well, honestly, I was really nervous, but when, when I started, I, I I got more used to it, and then I just explained to them how I, I could relate to it and how I like taught my, my fellow like classmates at school, and I taught my teacher and everything like that. Right. Okay, Shay, so there are, what, 13, 14-year-old kids are being brought to this country, Toronto specifically, uh, promised one thing and actually end up being forced labor or um, part of the sex trade. That's correct. 
And now, what can local councilors do? You might think that this would be a federal issue, but you wanted to talk to City Hall today. So, what can they do? Yeah, we were really excited for the first time, really ever, this human trafficking report. We've been working with the mayor's office um, and their respective councilors for the past 12 months, actually 15 months. And so today, we brought forward three recommendations to the uh, executive committee, and hopefully, they're going to pass it. One being data collection that we need to have a Toronto municipal uh, localized area where NGOs can report instances uh, so that we have Toronto statistics to bring forward on a provincial level and also on a federal level uh, to back up what the city of Toronto really needs. So that was our first recommendation. The second one was on collaboration. The importance of the city of Toronto uh, working with law enforcement, working with our politicians, working with NGOs, but then also looking to the provincial government and the federal government of how Toronto can help support what the federal legislation is already putting into place. Then lastly, we, um, we are talking about education. You can't fight this issue if you're not aware that it's happening in our own city. And that is our greatest weapon, it's our greatest tool. And so that was our third recommendation before council this afternoon, was that we would like to see all uh, city personnel, Toronto personnel within uh, council, first and foremost, to be properly equipped on how to identify victims of trafficking, situations of trafficking, so that we can properly allocate our resources and funds, if we get them, uh, if we can allocate those uh, efficiently so that that uh, when people identify these situations, they know who to call and how to handle the situation. Does it frustrate you that uh, people in Toronto maybe don't know this is happening? Uh, you know what? You could say yes to that. And the unfortunate part is that people don't know. And it's even more unfortunate that we even have to raise the awareness. I wish that I could sit before you here today and say that, you know, Toronto is a slave-free city. However, it's not. And so for the past year, like I said, we've been working on this report. And so for the first time ever, we're having a serious discussion before Toronto municipal government. And that's very exciting. So really, I think from here on out, it's only going to get better. And I think the citizens of Toronto are going to become more aware. And so we're heading in the right direction. And for that, I'm, I'm I'm very excited and grateful for. Okay, let me ask you one last question. If someone is listening or watching right now and they are a victim of human trafficking, what would your advice to them be? What, what could they do to help themselves? Um, if, if you're a victim and that you did need help, certainly you can call, if you don't want to even identify yourself, you could call Crime Stoppers uh, in Toronto. They, um, I used to always joke around, not really thinking that it was real when I was younger, but Crime Stoppers is fabulous. They work with uh, the police hand in hand, and Crime Stoppers has been a great tool in order to actually um, locate victims of trafficking and also for us to be able to locate victims of trafficking and crack down on those situations and rescue them. So. Crime Stoppers, you can go into um, your local divisions as well to identify yourself. Um, and right now, actually, that's one of the recommendations we're putting forward to the city is that we need to have a proper hotline that will be available to victims of trafficking in many different languages, not just English, because these girls that sometimes come in, and boys, uh, English isn't their first language. So that is actually part of our recommendation this morning for how victims can get proper help. Okay, and that Crime Stoppers number is, of course, 222 TIPS. Shay and Christopher, Thank you so much for your time, and uh, good luck with your work ahead. Thank, Thank you so you. much. <laughs>